If the YouTube comment section has taught me anything, it is that there are some very mean, disgruntled people out there. And also that people are very, very confused about sunscreen, why it's important, and if you should wear it. Spoiler alert, you should. Hello and welcome to the Queendom. I'm Sarah Ingle and today we're talking about the truth about sunscreen. And there are a lot of truths about sunscreen because in the skincare realm, it's actually a rather complicated topic, but we're gonna boil it down to the parts that are actually useful for you to take care of your skin. I think a lot of people know that you're supposed to wear sunscreen, but anytime there's like a commonly known fact out there, there tends to be a subset of people who think that they need to to disprove this somehow. Some big pressing facts about why you need to wear sunscreen. Number one, everybody knows that if you don't wear sunscreen, you increase your odds of getting skin cancer, which can kill you. It is very, very bad. I don't think anybody needs me to tell you cancer equals bad. I think that's a pretty commonly known fact. Problem number two, if cancer for some reason doesn't scare you, maybe it will scare you. <laughs> that 90% of premature aging is due to sun exposure. So if you would like to look a lot older than you are and be really hard on your skin and make your skin wrinkle faster and deteriorate faster, then in that case, you might wanna sip, skip the sunscreen. And one of the most common things that I've seen even in our own comments section around here is this idea that if you wear sunscreen, your body is going to stop producing vitamin D and you're gonna die. The most recent scientific studies do say that you are fine. Your body does not stop producing vitamin D just because you're wearing sunscreen. But even if that were the case and your body didn't produce vitamin D because you were wearing sunscreen, there are other ways to get your vitamin D. In fact, sun exposure does not actually even get you the required amount of vitamin D that you need. And you usually need to eat things that have vitamin D in it in order to get your recommended amount. But if you're like me, you wanna understand why these things are and not just be like, oh, okay, I will wear sunscreen. No, in order to understand how best to protect our skin, it's very helpful to understand how all of this works. So a little bit about sunlight. We're going to talk about UV rays. You probably heard of UV rays on things like your, your sunscreen bottles or on your sunglasses. The sun emits three different types of UV rays, also known as ultraviolet rays. There's UVA, UVB, and UVC. You usually don't have to worry about the UVC rays because the Earth's atmosphere blocks those all out. So when the sun rays are coming at us, those are already filtered out. We mostly have to deal with UVA and UVB. That's why when you see sunscreens, you'll see it says on it UVA, UVB. Hopefully, you wanna be using one that has UVA and UVB protection. UVB basically attacks just your dermis, which is the outer layer of your skin, and it can still cause some sun damage and um, things like freckles. However, UVA goes much deeper and a lot of the severe, um, more long lasting skin problems that you'll have, all the, like, the wrinkling, the leather skin creating comes from UVA because it goes much deeper into the skin. So because you can get different types of damage from UVA and UVB, it is very important that whatever you're using protects you from both. Now maybe you're saying, okay, I don't really go outside that much. I don't need to worry about sunscreen. Incorrect. Don't skip the sunscreen, even if you're not planning on going outside. You wanna know why? Because glass does not block UVA rays. Most normal glass does filter out the UVB rays, but the UVA rays, the ones that are ultra damaging, that cause those things like wrinkles and a lot of the more severe long-term damage, it comes right through the glass, 75% of it anyway. So it's like a little tiny bit filtered down, but most of that is still coming straight at you. And this is why even people like truck drivers, because they're sitting on the left-hand side of the car in the United States, they will tend to get more skin damage on the left side of their face because the sun does not filter that out. There is good news though. Most things like LED lights and a lot of the light, a lot of the lights in your house, 
If they are emitting UV rays, they're, it, they're, it's very, very little in comparison to the sun, especially. Now, obviously there's things like tanning beds uh, that are purposely designed to emit UV rays, so that's not always the case, but regardless, the key is wear sunscreen, even when you're inside, because the sun still comes in the windows. So other things that can impact the amount of UV rays that you're getting is how high in elevation you are. For every 1,000 feet you go up in elevation, there's roughly a 2% increase in the amount of UV rays that you're exposed to. So when you're flying, for instance, and you're sitting by that window on that window seat, remember, you're getting a lot of UV exposure up there because that sun is coming through, um, and even though there's a window there, all of that UVA light is hitting your face. So maybe before you take a nap, right with your face on the window with it open, you might want to close it or um, make sure you're at least wearing your sunscreen while you're up there. This is another reason why a lot of pilots get skin cancer is because they're constantly exposed to way more UV radiation than most people. I used to live in Colorado, just south of Denver, and Denver is called the Mile High City because it is raised about a mile up in the air. Um, so you are getting a lot more radiation up there. So if you live somewhere at high elevation, just remember you're getting exposed to so much more UV radiation and your skin is so much more at risk. In fact, we actually talked to a dermatologist in Denver and they said on average, people who live in Colorado actually look five years older than people in other states because they get so much more UV radiation. That takes me to another thing. If you ever go skiing, say you say you and your family go on vacation somewhere, we're gonna use Colorado as an example again, maybe you go to Vail or Breckenridge and you're out there, you're like, oh, it's snowing, it's cloudy, we're totally fine. No, you have the potential to get serious sunburn up there because well, for one, the snow reflects all of that right back up at you and it's it's compounding all those problems and you're also at a very high altitude so that UV radiation is also considerably higher than it would be at a lower altitude just because it's cloudy or just because it's cold doesn't mean that you don't have the potential to get serious sun damage don't skip the sunscreen just because it's snowing I think we understand a little bit more how the sun works in relation to our skin, but what about sunscreen? So there's two main types of sunscreen. There are um, what's called physical sunscreens, which are sometimes called mineral sunscreens, and there are chemical sunscreens. But what is the difference between a physical sunscreen and a chemical sunscreen, and which one should you be using? And so there's pros and cons to each that we're gonna learn about now. Physical sunscreens basically usually has two ingredients. In fact, I've got an example of it here. Um, titanium dioxide and zinc Oxide. So zinc is the really, really popular one that you'll see a lot of times. If you see zinc on there, you know that is a physical sunscreen. So a physical sunscreen tends to cooperate better with very sensitive skin. And it basically works by reflecting those UV rays back up out of your skin. So with those physical sunscreens, that's where sometimes you get that white cast. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's like when you put out a lot of sunscreen on, and especially if you take a photo, it tends to almost look like your face is glowing white. A nice thing about it is it does work immediately, but it does tend to be heavier and more visible. It's come a long way since like you see old pictures from like the 70s with like surfers with like completely white faces. I think they've managed to break down those particles more, which eliminates some of that white cast. So it's not as bad as it used to be, but it can still be there and it's, it is, it can be noticeable depending on your skin type and depending on the particular formulation that you're using. Chemical sunscreens, on the other hand, typically tend to be more lightweight and you can reapply them more times without it getting super thick because if you do a lot of layers of those physical sunscreens, it's gonna get pretty thick. Typically it's considered better for under makeup because you avoid that white cast and because it, it's not super thick. Um, however, there's definitely some cons that go along with it. 
For one, it can, depending on what type of chemical sunscreen you're using, cause irritation to more sensitive skin. And depending on the type of chemical that you're using, you have to be really careful because some of it can be extremely damaging to coral reefs. And when you think about it, it makes sense because you're putting all these chemicals on your body um, when you're on vacation and you're gonna go snorkeling and then those chemicals wash off <laughs> into the water, right into those coral reefs that you're snorkeling around. So there's a lot of chemical sunscreens now that you can order online in particular that are coral reef friendly. So uh, if you're gonna be going swimming around those coral reefs, definitely suggest doing that. There are a lot of Korean sunscreens that are very good um, and they're not damaging to coral reefs and a lot of them are even better for sensitive skins. Links into the description to some of those so in case you wanna get your hand on some of these, you can do that. But let's talk now about how to use that sunscreen to make sure that it is as effective for you as possible because if you're using it the wrong way, it's not gonna protect you like you think that it should. Um, one of the main misconceptions I think there is about sunscreen out there is this idea of SPF and people tend to think the higher the SPF, the uh, higher the, the power, it's like the power, how much power does it have to block the sun? And that's not quite how it works. That SPF or sun protection factor. SPF is more related to how long it will be before your skin will start to get red. So for example, SPF 30 means it will take 30 times longer on average before your skin will start to get red. So if you have very, very fair skin, your usual rate might only be five minutes versus if you have very dark skin, it more, might be more like 20 minutes. So if you're increasing that by 30 and you have very light skin, you might get somewhere like, I don't know, a little over, like two and a half hours or so, which means, after two and a half hours, you need to reapply sunscreen. Versus if you have a higher SPF, SPF 50, you can go longer without reapplying. However, most dermatologists recommend, regardless of the SPF, that you re reapply every couple hours. And all the protection you think you're getting is only if you apply enough sunscreen. So the recommended amount of sunscreen for your face and neck is a whoop, 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 is a half a teaspoon for your face and neck. And this little teaspoon doesn't look that big, but when I was looking to see how many squirts of this, this sunscreen right here that was, that was a lot. Most people are getting nowhere near the amount of sunscreen that they need to. So when you are applying your sunscreen, a fun little helpful tip that you can do is once you apply all of your sunscreen, kind of give it a minute to, to dry and everything and then put on another second layer of it and that hopefully will get you at least closer to the amount that you need to be using. A lot of people who wear makeup have this idea of, oh, I'm gonna use this foundation that has SPF in it. Great, that's fine and dandy. Some people think that, that means you can skip the sunscreen step. Please, oh please don't do that. And there's a really great channel, I believe they're called Beauty Within, that did a little experiment and they showed that the average amount of makeup from the little squirty makeup they had that somebody used to cover their entire face was a pump and a half. So they measured out how much of that same makeup they would need to put on your face. And it came out to, it was 11 and a half pumps that you would need just on your face, not even on your neck, to get the required amount for the advertised SPF. Please don't think you're protected just by getting like a BB cream or a foundation that has SPF in it. Yeah, it might be helpful to have that little extra protection in there, but that is not going to cut it for you. A couple other little helpful tips is make sure when you're applying your foundation to not just get your face, but to also get your neck, um, especially your shoulders if there's gonna be exposed. If you have any leftover, put it on your hands too because these areas are hit with a lot of sunlight. In your skin tear routine, usually the very last step that you do should be the sunscreen. So when you're putting on your sunscreen, make sure you put all of your other products on first, save your sunscreen for last. And obviously if you're gonna put 
uh, makeup on, you've got to put that on on top of it. If you wear makeup, you're like, oh, why already did my makeup? I can't be going and, and putting more sunscreen on later. You can get some sort of uh, mineral powder that does at least have some amount of SPF that you can be adding later in the day. So now I'm gonna show you some examples of some of my favorite ones um, right here. So if you're looking for something you can get in a drugstore, a Target, a Walgreens, a Walmart, this CeraVe, I think that's how you pronounce it. AM Facial Moisturizing Lotion with sunscreen. It has SPF 30 in it. It also has ceramides, ceramides, ceramides in it, which are great uh, along with uh, hyaluronic acid, which is another thing that helps keep your skin very moisturized. It's great overall. I love this stuff. It has both chemical and physical sunscreens in it, which is great because you're getting protection in two ways. It's probably one of the cheapest things that I have in my entire skincare routine because I have a bad habit of buying things that are way too embarrassingly expensive. This one is from Skin Medica. I'm sure it is extremely expensive. I bought it in a kit, but this has only um, those physical sunscreen ingredients. So only the titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. So if you have very sensitive skin or you don't want to use any chemical sunscreens, this could be a good option for you. This guy I used for, I've been using for years. Um, this one too, but I think I used this one for a long time before that. It's the Olay Complete Broad Spectrum SPF 15. It also comes in an SPF 30, which is probably even better. Um, but sensitive skin, if you're gonna get one of these, I highly recommend getting the sensitive skin one because the ones that are not for sensitive skin have fragrance in them and fragrance can cause all sorts of problems for your skin. Even if you're like, oh, it smells good or my skin's fine, it doesn't mind the fragrance. Sometimes those fragrances can even cause your skin to react to other things. It's just, there's really no reason other than some people think that it smells good. And and really people need to stop having fragrance in so many of our products because it's just not good for our skin. And it also has moisturizer in it too. And so this last one is a new one that I've got. A lot of YouTubers have reviewed this. It is the Purito Comfy Water Sunblock and the whole back is in Korean. So I cannot read the ingredients, but this is a great one. Um, I looked up the ingredients online. It has both UVA and UVB protection, which is very important. There's no white cast with this. And I believe this one is safe for coral reefs and it never really gets sticky or heavy. I, I really like this. So I know this was a lot of learning today. We had that <laughs> hair science one a little while back ago. And this was kind of reminding me of that because we were learning so much about the sun and UV rays and different types of sunscreens, but I think it's really important um, because we're, we're less susceptible to falling for, for gimmicks. A lot of what you see out there is really just marketing gimmicks, stuff to try and get people excited about buying their product. But the more we know about it, we know, okay, this is something that's actually gonna protect my skin. We wanna just keep ourselves healthy and take, take good care of our bodies because we only get one. <laughs> So I really hope this was helpful for you. I know even I was, I was researching it. I learned so much. I am changing the way that I look at um, the sunscreens that I use. I'm gonna be putting more on. <laughs> anyway, um, I hope this was helpful for you guys. Please tell me in the comments below, what is something that you learned today, either about the sun or sunscreen? Um, and if there's anything different you're gonna be doing in your sunscreen skincare routine, because of this today. If you wanna see more videos like this, more lifestyle, beauty, and fashion videos, but I think we've really lately been focusing a lot on busting myths and finding the truth out there, remember to subscribe, and if you want those to come right to you, ring the little bell. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. I think a lot of people know <laughs> So let's talk about sunshine. Woo! This is so weird. UVB. Why can't I talk?